the idea behind the XRP ledger. It's been uh, really used and specialized around financial use cases, specifically payments. So over a decade later, um, the, ecosystem, the, the ledger has matured into one of the most robust layer one blockchains, um, uh, de being decentralized, being, um, uh, having many apps built on it. There's a couple statistics up here, but um, um, you know, uh, lots of transactions moved and um, you know, market caps vary, but it is a sort of like the sixth today in ter terms of market cap. So it does gather uh, significant liquidity and significant, um, has significant pull in the ecosystem. In the blockchain ecosystem, I should say. Um, the, some of the design principles um, make it uh, extremely scalable. Um, it has been, uh, there is a really um, a deliberate, um, um, uh, you know, it, it is, has been very deliberately to be uh, robust and uh, to enable business use cases around um, uh, facilitating, you know, payments for large institutions. So it has been able to, it has a pretty good track record at this point, uh, ha having been, a been able to do this without failure since 2012. Um, it basically packs a lot of the features um, that you would find in smart contracts, in a way that are more accessible and simple than you would find uh, in other ecosystems. Um, and it's fast, it's got about a three, three second um, resolution on, 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 uh, on, uh, con on the consensus and on transactions. And, and it's relatively cheap as well. Uh, we say it's green in the sense that uh, it's an initiative that's been happening for a few years where the um, um, well, first of all, the way the protocol is designed is less energy intensive, but also the, um, the remaining carbon emissions are offset every year. Um, and I should say XRPL Commons is, um, is, is, is responsible for and is, has taken the lead on making, you know, uh, making the, carbon, the, the carbon footprint of the chain even lower. And we could talk about that initiative if you're interested in, in that. Um, it has, um, so the way the ledger is built, it has primitive transactions, um, primitive tra transaction types, sorry, which are um, at, the, uh, at, the, at the main layer and are accessible. And so these are sort of more advanced, um, uh, it has more, basically a list of more adva advanced transaction types. And so this basically means that um, you get out of the box a significant amount of features that are already um, um, accessible via the API and uh, documented, audited, and you know, tried and tested. Uh, so you get a native DEX, uh, basically allowing you to move tokens anywhere. Uh, you get um, issued assets, the, essentially the ability to represent digital currencies, which means you can manage um, token emissions um, um, and, the money, and the supply of them. Um, via, via uh, specific transactions that are on the layer one um, network. You don't have to build any of that out. It's already done. Uh, you get non-fungible tokens with uh, uh, built-in features uh, of royalties and, um, and, and trading offers and, and, and trading of NFTs. Um, you get controls over um, uh, assets, um, you know, uh, especially there's a lot of features around compliance where you can uh, prevent uh, uh, malicious actors from uh, transacting with you uh, or uh, having uh, certain controls in terms of the, the key management, multi-signature and all that stuff. Um, and then you get advanced payment uh, uh, features like uh, escrows and checks. Uh, escrows being exactly what it means in the sense that you get you know, you can get have the ability to um, conditionally issue funds, send funds to um, a, another account, uh, and checks being the idea that you can send money to someone and he would deliberately need to add to to accept them. So we'll go into some of these features. Uh, we'll go we'll go through most of these features actually uh, in the trainings today. Um, but if there's a specific one that you're interested in, like feel free to raise your hands and we can we can uh, we can talk about that. 
so one of the one of the selling points of the XRP ledger is its um, protocol native DEX. Um, it's on chain. Um, it aggregates uh, uh, liquidity in, in a single place, and so um, it allows essentially um, it allows you to have one place where you can. Um, put all your offers and all your bids, and you don't have to worry about fragmentation of market. You can um, you can uh, basically operate, you know, from the get-go on the layer one at the protocol level, um, the um, exchange of, of tokens. Uh, some of the um, differentiators versus other DEXs out there uh, would be the auto bridging feature. Uh, essentially, it means that if you're if you're transacting in uh, one currency and you're going to another currency, that pair may not be available on the DEX, but you, via the, the transfer, via a bridge to the XRP, you go basically from the currency to the XRP back to the currency and, you're, and that allows it uh, to find a path towards your, um, to, 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 towards the best price possible. So if there's a, if there's a way that the, you can get a better market than, than would be on just a single pair. You can, it basically finds a path for you. Uh, so all of this is happening automatically in the background for you, making sure that you always get the best price. Um, transactions hop from one currency to another as well, so there's all this pathfinding um, uh, logic that's built in. And we have an upcoming proposal. Um, our friend was just talking about it, uh, about the, uh, the AMM. Um, which will expand the liquidity uh, through an, a native AMM that will, you know, will, when, when we go in through the, all the transaction types, you'll see there's a, there's a few um, primitives that are uh, now built into the, to the, uh, to the ledger where you can interact with an AMM and um, pro programmatically. When we talk about tokenization, uh, XRPL supports native and issued tokens to rep represent assets on chain. Um, so, you know, primary types, some, most of you will be familiar with these, but you have, you know, fungible tokens, which are units of a token that are interchangeable and indistinguishable. Um, so this is basically your, your stable, stable coins, your uh, security tokens and utility tokens. And then, of course, NFTs, um, which allow you to um, uh, digitize a specific, uh, unique asset. Um, uh, I could go through some of these, uh, some of these details, but essentially um, I think the one interesting aspect uh, to highlight is the concept of trust lines. Trust lines essentially are ways to pre-authorize transactions between two different accounts. And um, this basically prevents you from, uh, you know, fat fingering uh, some, uh, you know, a transfer to someone uh, or even preventing um, Really enabling some of the some of the compliance that you need around uh, knowing your transaction, and so you can actually pre-authorize people to send you um, uh, assets, uh, which prevents a, a form of attack where, where compromised accounts are 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 are, are sending money to uh, non-compromised accounts and therefore uh, compromising them from a KYC point of view. So I'm going to focus a little bit on the NFT uh, part, which I think is, uh, is, is going to be relevant to a lot of you. Uh, in 2022, the community adopted a native NFT standard, making NFTs on XRPL significantly more secure, scalable, and cost-effective. Um, so you have, you know, again, uh, as a primitive um, uh, transaction on the ledger, you have the ability to mint, you can trade, you can monetize. Uh, with built-in royalty uh, settings. Um, you have, of course, uh, you know, uh, metadata. Um, uh, so, you know, uh, today that is an immutable, immutable part, but there's been proposals to update that to have a, include um, part of the data to be mutable. That's an interesting uh, sort of um, segue, but um, essentially, all the things you would you would you would need to store on the um, inside the NFT, you can do it, and um, and it's it's you get the program program program, 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 program um, 
that comes with um, the ability to, um, you know, to, to trade and pay and burn um, NFTs. All of this is built on top of the main uh, APIs uh, and included in all the uh, SDKs that we're going to show you today. You have the ability to, to address, um, to manage your NFT uh, minting and, and, um, and trading. So essentially, they're simple to use. You, there's, one, there's one central API that calls and triggers the minting uh, of the NFT. You can add the royalty payments. This is sort of a little bit of a schema of how it works, but it basically there's one stop shop to, to mint the NFT with, with, with all its properties. Uh, and then you get all of the features um, uh, of the ledger uh, automatically. So I think we went we went over that. Um, so today, the uh, the ecosystem of developers um, is very active. Uh, these are some of the some of the brands that are uh, building in different in different um, areas. I'll skip over that. I'm going to talk a little bit about. Um, so you know, it is the protocol is uh, 11 years old. Um, but it's still evolving, you know. I mean, in, in the blockchain space, it seems like it's uh, it's basically an eternity, you know. It's like cat years, um, but um, it is still evolving. And um, the way uh, the protocol evolves uh, on the XRPL is via amendments, and amendments are essentially um, technical proposals and code. That is event that eventually becomes code and uh, is voted on and by activating them on the different validator nodes. Um, this is a relatively long process. All the new, you know, you're adding a new feature. Like some of some of the features here um, that are just being added now and voted on uh, these days are, you know, the AMM, the automatic market maker. Um, the ability to create bridges. So this is, it creates the ability to um, use XRPL sidechains, um, but as well as other chains, so including the EVM sidechain. And um, the way that works is via an amendment where you have a, uh, there's actually, Mayuka will talk about that uh, tomorrow, but there is, um, there is a bridge that is created. So there's a few transactions that uh, native transactions that have to be included in the um, in the main ledger to allow uh, this interoperability, and um, there's also a new exciting feature around decentralized identity, which is which enables a significant number of use cases. It's a relatively simple piece of code that unlocks a lot of uh, a lot of potential value. Um, there's some here's some uh, ideas of development I mean, that are still in development. Um, and so the way the way it works is usually you propose you propose an amendment you um, you go through uh, a first round of discussion with the community then you propose an implementation and then finally you uh, propose a PR and that is eventually included in the main Ripple D and and then validators um, take the time to evaluate the specific features and how they affect their systems and over time vote for, vote for them by changing the, by upgrading their code and changing some of the settings so to enable these features. And if the um, uh, consensus is, which is more than 80% of the uh, UNL list validators agree, and they agree for more than two weeks, then the amendment is considered enabled and going through. So it's a long process, um, but it's a very robust process of, um, you know, testing along the way. That's to give you an idea of how, you know, maybe some of you, I didn't actually, um, I, I don't think that, uh, that, that a lot of you are uh, C++ or whatever, but like there's ways to contribute to new amendments and, and to make that, um, to make, to bring new features to the, to the, to the ledger, uh, which is a moving and changing thing. And I wanted to uh, also, um, just just capture um, the fact, uh, so you know uh, that the way you interact with the XRP ledger is um, is very similar in some ways. So I, for for the EVM people here, it's like very similar to basically having access to a very large um, smart contract. 
where all the all the transactions that you're doing on the smart contract are um, have been you know very carefully thought out to cover most of the use cases that you could think of for the domain problem. So a lot of the domain space that has been explored is around payments, so it's a very mature in that domain. Um, NFTs are also, at this point, considered very mature. Um, there has been, there's a lot of uh, really good primitives around, around monetary emissions, so um, that goes all the way up, so it starts with stable coins, but goes all the way up to uh, CDBC, as we talked about. Tokenization of real world, world assets, we'll talk about it with the guys from Palisade uh, in, a, in a couple hours. Um, and then, you know, new features that are being added, all of these AMM DID bridges, all of these, at the end of the day, come into this very large contract and you're interacting with it at a single API endpoint using the SDKs which have all of the features built in. And so that makes it really easy to just, you know, get in, include the, library, the SDK, and then start, you know, pu pu pushing transactions to the chain. All you need to worry about is the types of in interactions that you're going to do with the chain, and you're basically your app and your front end and your use case. The rest is kind of taken care of. And we'll, we'll see, hopefully tomorrow, I can show you how that logic has been brought into um, uh, the way we deal with EVM and bridges and, and how we bring, bring um, value from one chain to another. So how to get involved. Um, the starting point, xrpl.org. Learn.xrpl.org has a, uh, uh, a set of trainings, uh, online trainings, which are really great, hands-on. Um, I highly re recommend that. And then uh, for this, for the purposes of today, you can, that link is probably a bit too long, but you could just, uh, you can just look for XRPL Commons on GitHub and find the January 2024 uh, repo. And that should get you where you need to be uh, to go on into the workshop the next session. Um, we have, there's a lot of community events. We have a de developer conference every year at Apex, gonna be in June this year. Um, Actually, that date is wrong. I'm sorry about that. Um, uh, XRPL Commons is a great way to keep in touch. And, uh, you know, there's a number of meetups, hackathons. Uh, XRPL Zone is going to be happening at East Denver. Um, you know, we're going to be here at Paris Blockchain Week. There's um, a hackathon happening in London uh, in April as well. So these are all the ways that you can keep in touch and stay involved. I know you've just started this training, but just so you keep a... Uh, Keep an eye out. And that's it for a brief primer. <laughs>